Welcome back to another Income Portfolio update. In this video, I'll show you the dividends that I've received from October, November and December this year. I'll go through my dividend stock portfolio in full and show what stocks I've bought and sold during that time, giving you my investing plans and thoughts along the way. Lastly, I'll run through a quick update on my income and expenditure for my rental property investments. Let's get straight into the numbers. My portfolio currently stands at 57000 £964 invested. The market value of my portfolio was really interesting over this quarter, as I actually went into the red for the first time since the pandemic. I was only down 0.11%, but since then it has more than recovered. If you are a regular viewer to this channel, you'll know that I don't really pay too much attention to the market value of my portfolio, as I don't ever plan on selling any of the principal. As a dividend investor, I'm only ever interested in the income that the portfolio generates through dividends. What I'm trying to do is build a series of cash flow generating assets that pay me a passive income each month. So let's have a look at what my portfolio is made up of. In the interests of transparency, this is my full portfolio, showing all unrealized gains and losses. A lot of viewers seem to like that I am open and honest about my portfolio, and I don't see the point in trying to hide my losses. I want this to be a true and fair reflection of what I'm experiencing, so that people can relate to my videos. Let's now look at how much I've deposited into my portfolio over the last three months. In October and November, I deposited £750, and in December, I deposited £1,250. The average for the year was £906 a month, and the overall total that I managed to add over the year was £10,877. Using this graph, Let's now look at how my total amount invested has grown from zero over time. The graph continues to trend upwards, which just shows that I have been really consistent at adding to my portfolio each and every month. And these regular contributions are a big part of my overall strategy to keep feeding the portfolio and increasing my dividends. What I do to stay consistent is really simple and easy to do, which is to make sure that I pay myself first. This means that once I receive my salary payment, I contribute into my Trading212 account straight away. I've budgeted to invest a particular amount, knowing that I can still live well with what's left. So to avoid overspending and having nothing left at the end of the month to invest, I do it immediately after being paid. This is a long-term process for me, and hopefully one day my portfolio can start to contribute towards my monthly expenses, and maybe allow me to retire early or even just work part-time and I'll let you know how much I'm currently making later on in the video. So let's have a look at the stocks that I've been buying and selling over the last few months. I haven't sold anything, but I have spent £2,548 adding to my existing positions. It's a common theme on these update videos, where again, the bulk of that amount was topping up my ETFs, with £1,651 spent. During October, the price of realty income dropped under $50, which was really appealing to me in my portfolio. So I bought 10 shares at around $48. After these purchases, this means that the overall yield for my portfolio as a whole currently sits at 3.59%, which has increased slightly from 3.53% in my last update. This equates to around £2,080 per year in predicted dividends, or £173 per month. There will always be a discrepancy between my actual dividends received and my predicted dividends, just due to the timing of me purchasing shares and then being eligible through the X day of the dividends. Now let's look at the dividend income I actually received over October, November and December. October and November were relatively small months, but December was a big one, which I'll come to in a moment. In October, I received £63.23 from four different companies. In November, I received £93.83 from six different companies. And in December, I received £286.47 from 13 different companies. This was a really motivating month, with some hefty dividends from my ETFs, as they are my largest positions. This graph shows all of my dividends since receiving my first payment in 2020, and we can see that the numbers have been increasing year on year, as I keep contributing and reinvesting my dividends. The average monthly dividend in 2020 was £45.29. The average in 2021 was £77.88. 
The average in 2022 was £114.98. And the average in 2023 ended as £151.01. So a nice milestone to break that £150 per month average. All dividends received are always reinvested back into the portfolio to buy more shares that pay more dividends. And then I just allow the compounding process to do its work. My portfolio has earned a total of £4,689 in dividends. And by reinvesting these dividends, it's increased my portfolio from £53,275 to £57,964, which is a growth rate of around 8.8% so far. As more dividends are received and then reinvested, I do expect this percentage to get larger over time. The app that I use to hold all of my shares is Trading212, and I do so in a Stocks and Shares ISA, which means that all capital gains and dividends are tax-free, as I'm based in the UK. If you're interested in starting a portfolio with Trading212, I do have a link in the description where you can use my code, and we'll both get a free share worth up to £100. And if you wanted to, you can just sell that share straight away and pocket the cash. So what are my future plans for this portfolio? Back in my November 2022 update, I mentioned that the interest on my student loan had been increasing, which had started to worry me. As I was on one of the older plans, I had to pay this back in full. And I was paying interest of around 1.1% for a long time. But then I became really concerned when, from January 2022 to December 2022, the interest rate had more than trebled, to 3.25%. I didn't have any control over this variable rate. So over 2023, I made the decision to aggressively pay it off in full. It was difficult and took a lot of discipline, but I did manage to pay the remaining £12,000 balance off over the year, which I'm obviously really pleased about. Even more so because the interest rate is now at a crazy 6%. I never liked seeing those monthly student loan deductions from my paycheck, so to be debt-free, apart from my mortgages, allows me much more freedom in funneling this extra cash into investments. And as a result of paying off my student loan, from 2024, I'm looking to increase my monthly contributions from £750 a month to £1,666 a month, which should see me max out my 20k per year ISA allowance. Assuming that I manage this, and at the current dividend yield of 3.59% stays the same, all dividends are to be reinvested, and that there'll be no dividend cuts or dividend raises. This is what my portfolio could become. After five years, I could have a portfolio worth £180,000, generating around £521 a month in dividends. And after 10 years, my portfolio could be worth around £326,000, generating around £943 a month in dividends. And looking ahead even further, after 15 years, I could be earning £1,446 a month from a half a million pound portfolio, which does sound a bit crazy. These sorts of numbers really motivate me to stick to my plan and keep investing each and every month. I also invest in real estate and currently own two buy-to-let properties and rent out a secure parking space. So over October, November and December, this is what the numbers look like. The rental income has stayed the same. My two bed flat gets a thousand pound a month and my one bed flat gets 775. I also get 80 pound a month for renting out the parking space. The management fee has stayed the same as has the mortgage and there haven't been any repairs or maintenance costs either. So all in all, a pretty uneventful quarter on the rental side, which is how I like it. Therefore, my pre-tax profit over the period is £3,014. I do document my investing journey on this channel, so if you're interested in following along, please subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss any future updates. And if you have enjoyed this video, please hit that like button as it does help the channel out a lot and encourages me to keep making more of these videos. So you've just heard my investment update and I hope that I've covered everything that you wanted to hear. But if not, feel free to drop me a question in the comments section below. Also, let me know how 2023 has been for your investing journey. I'll be reading and responding to every message I can. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.